humanity had always been seen as a peculiar oddity in the vast expanse of the Galactic Federation. While other species boasted of their might through centuries of warfare, territorial expansion, and violent conflicts, the humans seemed to occupy a different space. They were calm, diplomatic, and entirely too focused on peaceful endeavors. Most of the galaxy's elder races found it amusing, this young species that had emerged from their isolated planet with grand ideas of unity and cooperation. Their contribution to the Federation had largely been technological innovations, economic trade, and cultural exchanges. It wasn't that humanity didn't have a military. Every race in the galaxy knew they had one. But their forces had never been anything to boast about. While other species paraded their war fleets and heavily armored ground troops during Federation summits, humanity sent negotiators, scientists, and diplomats. The consensus among the galaxy's elites was that the humans were soft. Polite, efficient, useful, but soft. That's how it had always been. Ambassadors Allura of the Takeri, a race known for their obsession with strength and dominance, was particularly vocal about humanity's position in the Federation. Humans, she often sneered during council meetings, are nothing more than idealistic dreamers. They have forgotten the necessity of force. Their history may be full of conflict, but they are far removed from it now. The council chambers were filled with species who nodded in agreement. The humans were ideal for trade agreements and neutral diplomacy. But when it came to true power, they didn't belong at the table of warriors. The galactic powers, races like the Takkeri, the Ragnaraks, and the Brutal Valections, were the ones who handled security and war. The humans, it seemed, were content to let others shoulder the burden of conflict. Perhaps it's better that way, said Yudran, a Valection general whose people were famous for their brutal methods in warfare. Humans aren't built for battle. Their society has grown too comfortable. They are incapable of the necessary violence that sustains dominance in this galaxy. Behind closed doors, discussions about the humans were more candid. They were tolerated, sometimes admired for their resourcefulness and technological contributions, but never feared. Why would they be? The humans had made themselves clear. They preferred diplomacy to bloodshed, innovation to conquest. And for most of the galaxy, that was fine. The humans were useful, and that's all they needed to be. Still, not everyone shared this view. There were a few voices, whispers really, within the Federation who had taken a deeper look into humanity's history. The more scholarly members of the Federation had studied ancient Earth, discovering the humans' long, bloody history of war. From tribal conflicts to world wars, their species had known violence intimately. For thousands of years, humans had fought, killed, and conquered with a brutality that rivaled even the most hardened races of the galaxy. But now, now they were different. Changed. They've forgotten, Zalura had said, laughing dismissively. Whatever they were in the past, they've moved beyond it. They think themselves above war now, and that makes them weak. But even as she spoke, there were those who wondered if that was truly the case. Humanity had not been involved in any significant galactic conflicts in centuries. They had avoided entanglements, steering clear of war and territorial disputes. Some said it was because they feared losing. Others believed it was because they had grown too soft to engage in warfare. But there were others, silent, cautious voices, who suggested a different theory. Perhaps humanity was not afraid of war, but rather afraid of what they might become if they allowed themselves to engage in it again. Far from the council chambers, in the dark reaches of space, a new threat was brewing. The Zothian Dominion, a race of conquerors known for their viciousness and hunger for expansion, had been growing bolder. They had tested the Federation's defenses, attacking minor species on the outer rim, but so far, the council had not acted with decisive force. It was as if they were waiting for the Zothians to strike somewhere significant before they considered a response. And then, the Zothians found their target, a human colony on the edge of Federation space. It wasn't the largest colony, nor the most important, but it was vulnerable. Isolated. Easy prey. When the Zothians attacked, they didn't just launch a strategic strike, they unleashed a brutal massacre. Entire settlements were wiped out, 
men, women, and children slaughtered without mercy. The Zothians left nothing standing, sending a clear message to the rest of the galaxy. The footage of the attack spread quickly, reaching the Federation Council within hours. And with it came the realization that this was more than just a raid. This was a declaration of war. The Federation Council met in an emergency session, discussing possible responses, but for the humans, there was no need for deliberation. Within hours of receiving news of the attack, Earth's response was immediate and absolute. We will handle this ourselves, the human ambassador said coldly, standing before the council. Gone was the warmth and politeness they had come to expect from humanity's representatives. There was no request for assistance, no plea for support. Just a simple declaration, humanity would take matters into their own hands. The other council members were taken aback. The humans had never reacted this way before. They had always been cooperative, always eager to work with the Federation in resolving disputes. But now, now they were different. Their diplomats had fallen silent, their leaders no longer engaging in the usual debates. Earth began to mobilize. Human fleets, which had been seen as modest, suddenly emerged in force. Massive warships, unlike anything the Federation had ever seen, moved into position. Entire battalions of soldiers began preparing for deployment. The humans had been holding back, and now they were revealing the extent of their military capabilities, capabilities no one had known existed. The galaxy watched in stunned silence as humanity shifted from quiet diplomacy to cold, calculated war preparation. And with it came an unsettling realization, the humans had never been weak. They had never been incapable of violence. They had simply chosen not to unleash it. But now, they had been provoked. And when humanity was provoked, something ancient and terrifying awoke within them. For the first time in centuries, the galaxy remembered what the scholars had tried to warn them about. Humanity was not soft. They were not weak. They were a species forged in fire, tempered by war, and trained by centuries of conflict. They had chosen peace, but peace was not their nature. The Federation Council, once dismissive of humanity's military capabilities, now watched in silent dread as the humans prepared for war. And they knew, with a growing sense of fear, that the Zothians had made a grave mistake. Humanity's patience had been mistaken for weakness. But now, the galaxy would learn the truth. Humans were not peaceful because they lacked the capacity for war. They were peaceful because they chose to be. And now, that choice had been taken from them. The Zothian ships descended on the human colony with brutal efficiency, cutting through its meager defenses as though they were nothing more than paper. The orbital bombardment came first, striking the settlements with terrifying precision, leaving smoking craters where buildings and homes had once stood. Then came the ground forces, wave after wave of heavily armed Zothian warriors, towering over the remaining human defenders, their reptilian forms imposing and merciless. It wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. The Zothians swept through the colony, tearing apart anything and anyone in their path. The humans fought back, of course, they always did, but their defenses were pitiful against the sheer overwhelming force of the Zothian attack. The local militia, equipped with basic weapons, was no match for the elite Zothian soldiers, who moved with calculated ruthlessness. In hours, it was over. What was once a bustling colony was reduced to ashes, its people gone, their screams lost in the wind. The Zothian commander, General Crax, stood in the center of the ruined settlement, surveying the devastation with satisfaction. The mission had been successful, another human colony wiped from the galaxy, another message sent. The Zothians had long despised the Federation, and humanity's colonies were an easy target vulnerable and ripe for destruction. Transmit the footage, Crax ordered, his voice cold and guttural. His command was quickly obeyed, and the scenes of devastation were broadcast throughout the galaxy. It was a message not just to the Federation, but to humanity itself, you are weak, you are prey, and we are the hunters. For the Zothians, this was how they solidified their dominance. Conquer, destroy, intimidate. And they believed humanity like so many other species before them, would crumble under the weight of fear and overwhelming violence. 
Crax returned to his flagship, confident that the humans would be too shaken to mount any meaningful resistance. But what Crax didn't know, what the Zothians hadn't anticipated, was how wrong they were. Humanity wasn't afraid. Humanity was angry. The footage of the colony's destruction spread quickly, not just within the Federation but back to Earth itself. It was broadcast on every screen, every channel, and within moments, the collective mood of the human race shifted. Anger simmered beneath the surface, growing into something cold and focused. There was no outcry for vengeance, no wild calls for retaliation. Instead, there was something far more dangerous, resolve. On Earth, in command centers deep beneath the surface, military leaders convened. Their expressions were hard, their discussions brief. There was no need for lengthy debate or careful diplomacy. The time for that had passed. The Zothians had crossed a line that could never be uncrossed. Now, there was only one course of action. We've kept our true strength hidden for long enough, General Harris said, his voice steady and calm as he addressed the gathered military commanders. The Federation thinks they know us, but they don't. The Zothians think they can strike at us without consequence. They're wrong. Across the room, nods of agreement followed. The Zothians had made a fatal mistake. They had assumed that humanity's restraint was a sign of weakness. They had looked at Earth's contributions to the Federation and seen only diplomacy, science, and trade. They had never seen the other side of humanity, the side that had fought its way through millennia of wars, that had survived conflicts so brutal they had reshaped the very fabric of human society. Activate the fleets, Harris ordered. All of them. The fleets. For centuries, Earth had maintained a secret. Its true military might had never been fully revealed, not even to the Federation. The warships that patrolled the galaxy, the soldiers that participated in joint peacekeeping operations, those were only a fraction of humanity's power. Earth had long ago prepared for the possibility of galactic conflict, even if the rest of the galaxy never knew it. The real fleets, hidden in deep space stations and secret orbital shipyards, were about to be unleashed. Within hours, massive human warships began to mobilize. These weren't the lightly armed cruisers the Federation was used to seeing. These were ships of war, bristling with advanced weapons, armor plating that could withstand even the heaviest bombardments, and engines that made them faster than anything else in the galaxy. The humans had spent centuries perfecting their military technology, ensuring that when the time came, they would be ready for anything. And now that time had come. The Zothians, still reveling in their victory over the human colony, had no idea what was coming for them. Their forces were spread thin across the galaxy, their arrogance blinding them to the possibility that humanity would retaliate with anything more than words. But while they celebrated, the human fleets jumped into hyperspace, moving with terrifying speed toward Zothian-held territories. On board one of the command ships, Admiral Kane stood before a tactical display, watching as his fleets moved into position. His face was expressionless, his demeanor calm but there was a fire in his eyes that spoke volumes. The Zothians wanted a war, he said quietly to his officers. We'll give them one. The human fleet arrived in Zothian space without warning. Their ships dropped out of hyperspace directly above a heavily fortified Zothian world, one of their core planets. There was no diplomatic message, no warning shots. The humans had made their decision. As soon as the fleet was in position, they opened fire. The first wave of attacks was devastating. Human warships unleashed concentrated barrages of kinetic and energy-based weapons, punching through Zothian defenses with brutal efficiency. Their planetary shields crumbled under the assault, and within minutes, entire cities were reduced to rubble. The Zothians, so used to being the aggressors, scrambled to respond, but their forces were too slow. Their fleets, spread thin across the galaxy, couldn't mobilize fast enough to counter the human attack. On the ground, Zothian generals shouted orders, trying to organize their defenses, but it was futile. The humans had arrived with overwhelming force, and there was no stopping them. For the first time in generations, the Zothians were the ones running in fear. In the command center of his flagship, Admiral Kane watched the destruction unfold on the tactical display. 
the Zothian resistance was faltering, just as expected. They had never been prepared for a direct assault of this magnitude, and now they were paying the price. Kane's expression remained cold, focused. There was no satisfaction in this, only the grim reality of what had to be done. The Zothians wanted to make an example of us, Kane said to his officers. Now we'll show them what happens when you provoke humanity. The fleet continued its bombardment, moving methodically from one target to the next, wiping out Zothian military installations, shipyards, and command centers. There would be no escape for the Zothian leadership. Every corner of their empire would feel the weight of humanity's wrath. The galaxy watched in stunned silence as news of the human counterattack spread. The Federation Council, once so dismissive of humanity's military potential, was now gripped by a deep unease. This was not the humanity they had known. This was something different, something terrifying. They had never realized just how dangerous humans could be when pushed too far. By the end of the first day, the Zothian homeworlds were in ruins. Their fleets decimated. Their leaders dead or in hiding. The Zothian dominion, once a proud and unstoppable force, had been shattered. And it had taken less than twenty-four hours. Back on Earth, General Harris stood in a war room, watching the reports come in. The message had been sent. Humanity was not to be underestimated. The Zothians had learned that lesson the hard way, and the rest of the galaxy would never forget it. We were content with peace, Harris said softly, more to himself than anyone else. But if war is what they want, then war is what they'll get. And now, the galaxy knew the truth. Humans were not weak. They were not passive. They were gods of war, and once awakened, there was no force in the universe that could stand against them. The Zothians never imagined what hit them. The human retaliation had been swift and unrelenting, with each strike calculated for maximum effect. Entire Zothian strongholds had been obliterated before they had time to react, and now the heart of their empire was unraveling at a pace they couldn't comprehend. The Federation, watching from the sidelines, could barely process what was happening. Humanity, long considered a minor power, had just dismantled one of the most feared military forces in the galaxy within days. But this wasn't a conventional war. It wasn't a prolonged struggle of attrition, diplomacy, or negotiation. It was extermination, clean, efficient, and terrifying. The Zothian military, despite its bravado, had begun to crumble. Their once unshakable confidence had turned to panic as human fleets ravaged their territory. The Zothian leadership, hidden away in fortified bunkers on their remaining core worlds, tried to rally their forces, but the damage had already been done. They were losing control, and worse, they knew it. General Crax, the architect of the initial human colony massacre, had retreated to his command ship. His mind was racing, trying to comprehend the scale of the disaster unfolding before him. His forces had been trained for warfare, conditioned to be ruthless conquerors. But they had never encountered anything like this. The humans weren't just fighting back. They were dominating the battlefield with an aggression and precision that left no room for counterattacks. Prepare the remaining fleets. Crax barked at his officers. We'll regroup at Sector 9. We need to reinforce our defensive positions. But even as the words left his mouth, Crax knew it was a lie. There was no regrouping. The humans had already anticipated every move he could make. Every stronghold he fell back to was hit within hours, their defenses torn apart by human forces before the Zothians could even mount a proper counteroffensive. On the battlefield, human soldiers moved like shadows. These weren't the militia forces that had been slaughtered during the initial Zothian attack. These were highly trained warriors, specialized forces that had been held back, kept secret, until humanity deemed the moment right. And now, they had been unleashed. The Zothians were no strangers to war. They had conquered countless worlds and subjugated many species. But they had never faced anything like this. The humans didn't fight with rage or desperation. They fought with cold, calculated efficiency. Every human strike was precise. Every movement part of a larger strategy that was unfolding with terrifying speed. On a Zothian-occupied world, human forces landed in droves. 
Their armored figures marched through the debris of what was once a proud Zothian military outpost, methodically clearing out any remaining opposition. Human war machines, sleek and deadly, rolled through the streets, their cannons firing with pinpoint accuracy, leaving no room for resistance. The Zothian soldiers who had been stationed there barely had time to react before they were overwhelmed. Plasma fire lit up the air, but the human soldiers moved with a discipline that shattered any illusions of a fair fight. They were faster, stronger, and more technologically advanced than the Zothians had anticipated. It wasn't just a fight for survival anymore, it was a rout. Fall back! A Zothian commander shouted, but his voice was drowned out by the chaos around him. His forces were being torn apart, not by overwhelming numbers, but by superior tactics and weaponry. The humans seemed to know their every move before they made it, outmaneuvering the Zothians at every turn. In the command center of the human forces, Colonel Arden watched the battlefield from a holographic display, his expression unreadable. His troops were executing the battle plan with surgical precision, just as they had trained for. The Zothians had never expected a species like humanity to have such advanced military capabilities. But that was their mistake, underestimating a race that had known war far longer than they realized. They're breaking, Arden said calmly, observing the chaos from afar. Just like we knew they would. The Zothians, for all their pride and bluster, had never faced an enemy that could adapt so quickly to their tactics. Human soldiers moved through the battlefield like predators, picking off Zothian stragglers with ruthless efficiency. The Zothian soldiers, once feared throughout the galaxy, now ran in terror. And it wasn't just their forces that were faltering. The Zothian leadership, scrambling to maintain control, found themselves in disarray. Their communications were being jammed, their supply lines severed, and every attempt at regrouping was met with overwhelming human firepower. They had started this war with arrogance, believing humanity would be an easy target. But now, they were seeing the truth. Humanity wasn't a weak, pacifist race. There was something far worse, an ancient war machine that had been dormant for too long. Back on Earth, in the war rooms beneath the surface, the human leadership remained calm. The strategy had always been clear. Humanity had never wanted this war, but once provoked, they had no intention of losing. They had spent centuries preparing, knowing that one day, the galaxy might push them too far. And that day had come. The Zothians had poked a sleeping giant, and now they were facing the consequences. Across the galaxy, the news of humanity's sudden rise to power spread like wildfire. Alien species who had once laughed at the idea of humans being a military force now watched in stunned silence as human fleets dominated the battlefield. The Federation Council, still reeling from the sheer speed of the human counteroffensive, convened in an emergency session. Ambassador Zalura, who had once dismissed humanity as soft, now sat in silence, her reptilian eyes narrowing as she watched the reports. She, like so many others, had been wrong. Terribly wrong. What are they? A council member from the Jernex species whispered, his voice shaking with disbelief. How did we not see this coming? They've always been like this. Zalura replied, her voice quiet but steady. We just never pushed them far enough to see it. The truth was plain for all to see now. Humanity, for all its diplomacy and cooperation, was a race forged in war. They had simply chosen not to show it. But now that choice had been taken away. Now, the galaxy was seeing what happened when humans were forced into conflict. And it was terrifying. On the Zothian homeworld, Crack stood in his command center, his eyes wide with disbelief as the reports continued to flood in. Every defensive line, every stronghold, was falling. His forces were being crushed, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. We underestimated them, Crack muttered, his voice barely audible. We thought they were weak. We were wrong. The humans had shattered the Zothian military's confidence, and now the Zothians were fleeing in every direction, trying to escape the onslaught. But there was nowhere left to run. Humanity was closing in, and they weren't stopping until the Zothian dominion was nothing more than a memory. In a matter of days, the Zothian's empire had crumbled, and the galaxy was left in stunned silence. 
the humans, once seen as minor players on the galactic stage, had revealed themselves as a force far greater than anyone had imagined. And now, the galaxy would never forget. The Zothian Dominion was in ruins. What had once been a sprawling empire, feared and respected throughout the galaxy, was now little more than scattered remnants and smoldering debris. Their fleets had been obliterated, their planets occupied or left in ruin. The Zothian leadership, once so sure of their dominance, was either dead, captured, or in hiding. The unstoppable force they had once believed themselves to be had been shattered beyond recognition. Humanity had done it with a ruthless efficiency that left the galaxy in shock. The Zothians, a race that had prided itself on its military might and its relentless conquest of weaker civilizations, had never stood a chance. They had believed they could wipe out a human colony and face no serious consequences. They had assumed humanity, with its peaceful reputation, would either surrender or seek Federation assistance. What they had not realized was that in their arrogance, they had triggered a transformation, a shift that had awoken something long dormant within the human race. In the halls of the Galactic Federation, silence reigned. The images of human war fleets cutting through Zothian defenses like they were made of paper had been broadcast across the galaxy. Every member species had watched, unable to look away, as the humans dismantled the Zothian military with terrifying precision. What had once been a quiet race focused on diplomacy and trade had revealed itself to be something much darker and far more dangerous. Back on Earth, the war rooms were quiet now. The initial shock of the Zothian attack had faded, and in its place was a grim understanding that the galaxy would never view humanity the same way again. The leaders of Earth, Men and women who had spent decades negotiating peace and keeping humanity's more destructive potential under control now found themselves in a position they had never wanted to be in, the galaxy's most feared superpower. General Harris stood before a tactical display, watching the final reports come in. The last of the Zothian holdouts had been wiped out. There was no resistance left, no enemy forces to speak of. It was over. The Zothians are done. Harris said quietly, his voice carrying the weight of finality. They won't recover from this. Across the table, other military leaders nodded in agreement. The Zothian threat had been neutralized so completely that there was no question of a resurgence. Humanity had seen to that. But now, there were other questions looming. What would happen next? What would the galaxy do in response to humanity's newfound position? For years, humanity had played the role of the quiet member of the Federation. They had contributed to peacekeeping efforts, diplomacy, and economic growth. But now, after what had happened to the Zothians, they couldn't hide behind that facade anymore. The rest of the galaxy knew what humans were truly capable of. Admiral Kane entered the room, his expression grim but calm. He had overseen much of the human fleet's actions during the war directing the strikes that had crippled the Zothian war machine. His eyes met Harris's, and they exchanged a silent understanding. Reports from the Federation are starting to come in, Kane said, taking a seat at the table. Most of them are cautious. Some species are outright terrified. They don't know what to make of us now, Harris exhaled slowly. They saw what we did. They saw what we're capable of, Kane nodded. And that scares them. We've been quiet for so long. Now they see us as the strongest military force in the galaxy. Some of them will want to make alliances. Others will see us as a threat. That was the reality of their situation now. Humanity had been forced to reveal its true strength, but in doing so, they had changed the power dynamics of the entire galaxy. They were no longer a species that could be overlooked or dismissed. Now, Every decision they made would be scrutinized. Every move they took would be watched with suspicion. We didn't want this war, Harris said, his voice low but firm. But we couldn't stand by and let them slaughter our people. The Zothians thought they could erase us, but they underestimated us. Now the rest of the galaxy knows what happens when you push us too far. Across the galaxy, the fallout from the war was just beginning. Species that had once been friendly with the Zothians were now scrambling to distance themselves from the shattered empire, afraid of what humanity might do next. 
even among the Galactic Federation's most powerful members, there was unease. The Takari, who had once mocked humanity's perceived softness, were now silent. The Velections, known for their brutal approach to warfare, had withdrawn into their own territories, their leaders unsure of how to respond to this new reality. In the heart of the Federation Council, the debates were already raging. Should humanity be praised for its decisive action, or should it be feared for its overwhelming power? Some argued that humanity's victory had saved the galaxy from a growing Zothian threat. Others warned that humanity might now see itself as above the rest of the galaxy, and that their peaceful image had been nothing more than a mask. Ambassador Zalura, who had once been humanity's harshest critic, found herself in a difficult position. She had always spoken out against human involvement in military affairs, believing that they lacked the strength to be a true power in the galaxy. But now, after watching what they had done to the Zothians, even she couldn't deny the truth. They are war gods, she muttered under her breath, watching the council debates unfold around her. Dormant for too long, but still gods. Her words echoed the fears of many in the council. Humanity had shown restraint for centuries, but now that restraint had been shattered. The question was, would they choose to return to their peaceful ways, or had the galaxy awakened something that could never be contained again? Back on Earth, Harris stood by a viewport, looking out at the distant stars. The galaxy was vast, and humanity's place in it had just changed forever. He knew the road ahead would be difficult. There would be mistrust, fear, and possibly even new enemies. But one thing was certain, humanity would never again be underestimated. Let them come, he whispered to himself. We've shown the galaxy who we are. But deep down, Harris knew that this victory came at a cost. Humanity had been forced to reveal its darkest nature, and once unleashed, that part of them could not be easily hidden again. The galaxy would never see them as the peaceful diplomats they had once been. Now, they were something else entirely. They were war gods. And the galaxy would remember.